In this video, I'll share three ways to create the perfect health bar in Scratch. The first will be using the pen extension and the others using clones. Each one of these will be appropriate within particular circumstances, depending on what is the task at hand. Okay, first let's take the case of the pen health bar. In this stage, I have two standard messages, init and tick. Pretty normal stuff, this is the usual way that I'd recommend programming games. The health bar sprite itself has no costume, and I just have a modifiable health variable, which at the moment doesn't do much. Let's begin coding this. We will need to add the pen extension for actually drawing the health bar. First erase all, then pen up, and then set the pen size to be something like 20. There will be a series of steps to draw the bar, and this is better done with a block. So let's create one called draw, making sure to run without screen refresh. The goal of this function is fairly simple. We want this to start at the top left of the cat and then just move rightward. The degree to which we move rightward will depend on how high the health is. Let's code this into fruition. Erase all, then check if the health is not zero. If yes, then first pen up to avoid drawing anything during this first movement. Next. Go to whatever is the X position of the sprite, minus 50. Since the health bar has a length of 100 pixels, this will position it in such a way that it is perfectly aligned with the cat. For the Y position, we move upward from the cat by 75 pixels. Great. Point rightwards at 90 degrees, then bend down, and finally move health steps. This will complete the function, but we haven't called it anywhere. This should be after the tick message is received, and that is the basic template for the health bar. If you test the program, the bar should function perfectly as intended, but it is a dull blue one because we haven't set up any colors. We can easily customize this to have three different colors. Whenever the health is greater than 75, we will have a nice green color. When it is greater than 25, but less than 75, we will have a bright yellow color, and finally, when it is below 25, we will make it a red color to make it look like the player is about to die. Very simple to program, and that's pretty much it. This should give the multicolored health bars that you see on most games. This is nice, but the problem is that it's a bit hard to draw a perfect black boundary. Moreover, the health bar always goes to the back layer. Sometimes we'd want the health bar to show on the top, and in those cases, we do need to use a sprite health bar. I'll first go through the most straightforward method, and then I'll cover the more tricky but efficient one. So well, how does this work? Essentially, we will first have two clones at the end for the borders, and a single clone for each health number. Since the health goes from 0 to 100, we will have 100 of these clone strands plus the borders. Depending on the health, we will just change the color of each one of these strands. Fairly simple to explain, but this will take a little bit of work to set up. Go to the costume tab of the health bar, and this is very important, switch to bitmap mode. This will allow us to use pixel perfect costumes, without which we'd have a lot of problems. With that out of the way, zoom in close to the center, and rename this costume to border. Then switch to using the line tool. The border will be black in color, that is, have a brightness of zero, and after this, ensure that the line size is four units. Now, use the line tool carefully to make a straight line covering 2.5 squares above and 2.5 squares below the center on the left. After this is done, the window should show the dimensions as two cross 20. Great. That's it for the border. Duplicate this within the sprite, calling it none. Switch the mode to the eraser tool and set the width to be two. Now, slowly use the mouse pointer to cut off half the line. The eraser should snap to the end of the line and just bring it down slowly, removing the extra parts as and when they appear. Great, that's the none costume and now we can create the colors easily. Duplicate this and rename the costume to green. For the color, I'll set it to 35, 60, 100 to get the same green color as before. After this, choose the line tool once again 
but change the size to be 2. Leave aside the black line that is above each of these squares and just green out the rest. And well, that is it. The black tips at the top and bottom will give a boundary at the sides without a border. Anyhow, the same thing just needs to be done for the yellow and red colors. It's very straightforward consisting of the same steps. That took quite a while to set up, but the code is relatively simple. Since many of the clones need to be created, we do that within a single block called create clones, making sure to run without screen refresh. We can use this block after init and then create a variable called clone ID for this sprite only. Initially, clone ID can be zero and after switching the costume to the border, create a clone. Okay, increment clone ID and then switch the costume to green. After this, we will need 100 more clones, making sure to index them by incrementing the clone ID each time. Finally, switch the costume to border once again, create a clone, change the clone ID by one, and then hide. Great, that's half the code. Let's now code the tick message. Keep in mind here that the sprite itself will have a clone ID of 102 after everything is done. So in the negative of that case, show, and then create a function called move, making sure to run without screen refresh. You can use this block immediately after, and then we need two variables to keep track of the health bar along the X and Y axes. The sprite itself can set these values to ensure that it's to the top left of the cat. Since there is an additional border, we move by negative 51 pixels. Great. For the function, as long as the clone is not a border, its costume will be affected by the health variable. If the health variable is only say 30, then clones 31 to 100 can stay black and that's what we'll do here first. The remaining clones can switch their color depending on what bracket the health is in, whether it's green, yellow, or red. Lastly, each clone will go to a different position based on the clone ID variable in the x-axis and health bar y in the y-axis. And that will be it. Test the code out and the health bar should look a lot smoother and better looking. Not only that, but since these are clones, we can keep them above other sprites if we wish. That's all great, but this has one major drawback, and that is the fact that we have used 102 clones. Since Scratch has a 300 clone limit, we can't use even three of these health bars within a single project. This method is all right if we just need one health bar, but otherwise we're better off with method number three. This will involve using a very clever trick to get the health bar working. We will first have one clone costume of a 50% health bar at the lowest layer. For the health greater than 50, we use a second costume on top of this and keep it moving leftward when the health decreases. Finally, if the health is less than 50, we switch the second costume to a black one on the right side and then repeat the same process. So this is fine in theory, but getting pixel perfect stuff is nonetheless quite tedious. Go to the costume tab and once again convert to bitmap. First, we can draw the green part of the 50% health bar. This will have a height of four squares. Next, we must extend this to a rectangle of width 50 pixels on the screen. 50 pixels will mean 12.5 squares. So create a simple marker on each one of those endpoints and connect them one after another with the line tool. Scratch's fill tool is a bit buggy at the moment, so instead you can use the fill rectangle tool to get the color everywhere. All right, now we need the border. First, mark the endpoints at the left. These will be immediately after the green rectangle. The vertical line is quite easy, but for the horizontal one, it's better if we mark the other two points as well. Zoom out and then put the point at the end of 13 squares to the right. This should be done at both the bottom and the top. Now it's all easy. Connect them one after another and just make the boundaries fill up with the remaining space all black. We can call this half green because well, it's 50% full. Great. Now we have to do the same thing, but for the yellow and red half-filled bars. 
Similar to method number two, we can create a boundary around each one of these and then fill them with a different color. If you're okay with just one color, then a single costume will do, but these other costumes will make the health bar more interactive. All right, now we need the other half of each color. Once again, convert to bitmap and choose the same green color. In my case, 35, 60, and 100. After the initial line, move to the right, and here we need a green bar of once again 12.5 squares. This will be the same as initially, just on the right side of the center rather than the left. This can be called green over, and we need to remake the same thing but for the other colors. However, there is one small change. Rather than making a red one, we will make a black one. The reasoning for this is simple. The additional costumes are needed only when the health is greater than 50%. However, since the red bar will only display if the health is less than 25%, the half red costume is quite sufficient. All right, that's almost all of the hard work. The code should be a breeze. After init, hide and then point rightward. To distinguish the clones, we will need a clone ID variable. After this, set it to 1, then create a clone, increment the clone ID and do the same for another clone. This way, the IDs of the clones will be 1 and 2, while the sprite will be 3. Great, now let's code the tick message. I'll create some space so that the code is visible. Here, we will program each case of the clone ID separately. In the last case, which refers to the sprite, we can set our health bar x variable to be the x coordinate of the cat. There's no need for any offset here because our half filled health bar is already centered. Let's now code the half filled bar. First, we move it to the health bar x and y coordinates and then show. Like previously, we need to set up a bunch of if else conditions and change the color of the health bar based on the value. Over 75 will be green, from 25 to 75 will be yellow, and below 25, red. That's it for the first clone. For the second clone, move it to the front layer, show, and then check if the health is greater than 50. Let's first take the case where the health is less than 50. In this case, the black overlay needs to obstruct the half bar, depending on how much the health is less than 50. So first switch the costume accordingly and for the coordinates go to health bar y and health bar x minus 50 minus health. This should make sense. When the health is 50, this will just stay put, but as the health decreases, it will move leftward and hide more and more of the original color. Almost there. If the health is greater than 50, we additionally check if it is greater than 75 in order to switch between the green and yellow costumes. After all, there can be two possible cases. Outside the if else condition, we position the clones similarly as before, except replacing 50 by 100. This is because the clone needs to start moving leftward as soon as the health drops below 100. Well, that is it. At this point, you should have a complete working health bar, the exact same as the one we had previously, just with a lot fewer clones. With that said, thanks for watching. Make sure you leave a like if this helped you out, and until next time, peace out.